3.30? All right, welcome. Uh, come on in, you're in the right spot. Yeah, I remember you. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay. You just can't say hi. <laughs> there we go. Come on in. So while we're waiting for people to shuffle in, because we never start always at 3.30, what we're going to do today is we're going to have some fun. It's a fun interactive presentation. We did these before during the um, members of that in June, but they weren't open. So they went over very, very, very well. And um, to begin with, while we're, while we're relaxing there, I see there's a lot of parents in the room, there's a lot of kids. Um, anyone have a grandmother in the room? No? Anyone, anyone have a grandmother who plays video games all day? Grandmother's in the room. No? Your grandmother plays video games all day? This one does too. She's 100 years old. Her name is Kit Paul. successful programs is 
video game program. We're number one in Ontario for video game program. Now that's not graphic art, that's not animation, that's not what Sheridan does or Humber or anything like that. They do graphic art and animation, we do programs. It's four to five people in a game studio are programmers. Our good intentions can't make a video game, programmers can't. And we're going to prove that today. Because you can do that if you do some programming. And there's no technical tool on that lot. Um, very, very easy to do. And you guys can make games yourself. So, to begin with, um, this is our section outside the entrance of Game On. If you want to learn more about the game industry, things like Canada has the third largest video game industry in the world. Why don't you do that? One person. Yes, it's massive. Uh, you beat uh, well, behind Japan and the US. So it's a lot of fun information, and you can even do like 8-bit art and stuff like that there too before you want to game on. But to start with today, I want to ask you guys a question. Who knows who these two games are? Ooh. Hey, what's the one that's left? Just shout it out. Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Angry Birds. What's on the ring? It's so fun. Yeah, the older kids in the crowd. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Okay, which one made more money in 2011? Angry Birds. Who says Angry Birds? That's most of you. Who says Call of Duty? Like one person? Call of Duty. Fuck for that. Angry Birds is everywhere. How many people play Angry Birds? Angry Birds. <laughs> um, the company that made it, a very small studio called Rovio, and in 2011 they had $12 million in revenue just from Angry Birds. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 made $1 billion in the first 16 days it was on the market. And it was the first game to do so. And now that's the standard. One billion in the first 16 days. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is Rovio is a small company. It took eight people just over six months to make Angry Birds. That's not a lot of time, right? Not a lot of effort. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 took 200 people times two studios. 400 people, almost two years to make. A lot more money. Well, which one's more profitable, profitable per person? Angry Birds, for sure. So, what I wanted to remind you guys is the video game industry is very, very diverse. It goes from very, very small to very, very, very large very quickly. You get the big AAA titles like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, the realistic graphics. And you get the cool, fun to play mobile games and web games that cost 99 cents or are free, like Angry Birds. Right? And you can't just break games by how cool they are, how popular they are. It's a very, very different industry. Now, here are some games over the over the time. You're gonna see Game On. Okay? Susan from Game On. Who knows what the this little guy over here on the left is? Space Invaders. Is Space Invaders in Game On? Who's played Space Invaders in Game On? It's there. As soon as you go in, go off to the left. So Space Invaders came out in 1978 and it started the video game industry. Before Space Invaders, all we had was Tom. <laughs> My mother will always think of video games as Tom. Whenever I say I'm working on this new video game that's going to be published on iPhone, she goes, oh, is that like Tom? <laughs> it's tragic. <laughs> but, 1978, you're defending the, the Earth against Space Invaders on further of time. Overnight, it became a success. People poured 8 billion quarters into Space Invaders and Chains worldwide in the first couple of years. Wow. And after that, everyone started making video games. Nintendo, Sega, so those games. Right? Uh, Konami, Tato, they all came in and started making video games. That was the birth of the game this year. But ever since then, you know, we were limited by technology. What, what's happened? during the years as we went past, you know, Pac-Man to Street Fighter to all the way up to realistic games like Skyrim over here, what happened? Yeah. Graphics got better year after year because to a game studio, better graphics meant guaranteed sales. Wait a second, wait a second, what about today? <laughs> <laughs> that's Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, and that's your words. Do they have to, how many people play Minecraft here? <laughs> if you go to our trials, you can see a creeper up in the front. Look for him. He's hidden. Um, so, 
Does Minecraft have to have great graphics to be a great game? No. 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 Does Angry Birds have to have very realistic graphics to be a great no. game? No. Oh, I see it, I see it. Minecraft on a tablet back there. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons, guys. Um, we have more games than ever before. We play them on our smartphone. We play them on our computer. We play them on our console. All right? And better yet, anyone can make a game. 20 years ago, if you wanted to make a game, you had to knock on the door of a AAA publisher like Ubisoft or EA Games and say, hey, I got this great game idea. And they'd say, yeah, boss, we all have great ideas and they make money. Right? So you couldn't make a game unless you were part of a big company. Now anyone can make a game and publish it on the App Store or Apple or Android Play Store or on Steam or any of the other online retailers. We get our games on the internet. Which means you don't need a big company behind you. You just need to know how to make a game, and you can publish your game. So we're seeing more games than ever before. These guys make games. Yeah. Yep. yeah. No. That's Phil Fish from Montreal. He made Fez, and that's uh, Andrew McMillan. His friend Tommy and him made uh, Super Meat Boy. I don't know if you played those games, but they're very, very popular. You want to play Super Meat Boy or Fez? Great games. They're both Xbox games. But uh, they didn't need a AAA publisher. Yeah, Super Meat Boy made $20 million in the first weekend. Pretty yeah. lucrative. So when you buy games like that, when you see games like that, what you're saying when you, when, you, when you do that is you're saying that awesome gameplay is far, far better than good graphics. And so graphics don't mean as much today. People still buy the great realistic graphical games, but that's not the only type of game today. We have a wide variety of different types of games today, and a lot of the newer and cooler games don't necessarily fall into that good graphic category, like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft, yes. Great game. Okay. Now, who would like to make a game? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a game. You can go home, you can download this free software and all the step-by-step -step instructions. Very easy. I'll give you the instructions in a few minutes, twice. Um, you just have to go to the internet and do exactly what we do here. But what I want to show you is very easy to make a game. You don't need to be a programmer. You don't have to know a lot about programming. There are lots of software suites where you can just start making games and having fun. And then later on, if you really want to make some really cool games, like an Angry Birds or Minecraft game in the future, um, you can get into computer science and, and uh, learn how to make those in a programming language, right? And have some fun that way. But you can make games right now, and even games that you publish. The software we use today, you can even publish on uh, iPhone and iPad. Yeah. So the game I've chosen is Galaga. Who's played Galaga before? Yeah. It's a great game. It's also an easy one to, to demo. <laughs> because in Galaga, you have a ship at the bottom, and you shoot these space bugs. Anyone hate bugs? <laughs> you hate bugs? I hate bugs, too. I love Galaga, because I don't like bugs. <laughs> and especially space bugs. Right? Um, so, there's these little space bugs that kind of swarm up, they're at the top there, and they go back and forth in rows, and you shoot up, and you, you kill these space bugs. Galaga is in Game On, it looks just like this, and if you've been to Game On, you might have recognized it right here in the end. Okay, so, if you want to get these instructions tonight, you might want to take a picture of this slide. I'll put it up at the end as well, so don't worry if you don't have your camera out, you can take a picture at the end of the session. I'm going to have the exact same slide up at the end of the session. And all you have to do, you don't have to be on Twitter. You just have to go to Twitter.com. You don't have to have a Twitter account or anything. Just go to Twitter.com. That's where we do a lot of social media. And uh, you just go to Twitter.com or Google Twitter and look, search for Pound Game on Science. And tonight at 9 o'clock-ish, <laughs> I'll live in Cambridge to take more um, at, at 9 o'clock, I'm going to post a link where you can get the instructions step by step, easy to follow, the graphics that I've made, which are very easy to make, to keep the graphics, and um, the, uh, the actual link to the program called Game Maker. Has anyone here used Game Maker before? No, one person. Game Maker is a very easy program to use, that's why I chose it, but there's other ones that are just as good that you can explore with. Game Maker is probably the best or well known one. Game Maker 
can make games, but what it's really designed to do is make game prototypes. Now what I mean by game prototype, guys, is if you're in a game company, small, medium, whatever, and you have a great idea for a game, you can't just tell people about it. You can't say, I've got this great game. It's going to do this, this, and this, and it's got zombies, pirates, and ninjas. Right? They're going to, your eyes are going to gloss over, they're going to say, hmm, probably not. But what if, what if you could show them kind of what your game should do graphically? Not to polish, just it's roughly what it will do. They'll probably say, wow, that looks really cool. That's going to be a great game. Let's spend the next six to eight months developing it. So it's always good to show people your ideas before you get a game ready to develop. And that's what Game Maker is designed to do. It's designed to get a game prototype ready, and then you can decide, hey, I want to spend the next eight months making it polished and everything. So a side effect of Game Maker is it's great to play around with. You can make your own games. And if you buy the $500 version, you can publish for iOS, iPhone, and Android, and uh, iPad. So we're going to use a free one. Free one's good. And if you go to chapters, you can buy a ton of different Game Maker books. Great for ages 5 to 70. Step by step, too. All right, guys. So I'm going to close this down. And the next part of my presentation is going to need the lights off because you need to see my screen. We're going to make Galaga. So who wants to make Galaga? Okay, and in the process, I'm going to tell you a lot about games and game terms and cool stuff that you can tell your friends and family members and pets and stuff like that. So, let's open up Game Maker. And I'm going to turn the lights off there. All right. This is the free version. The only one you need. And if you look at Game Maker, it's not really a difficult program to use, but on the left-hand side, there's a bunch of terms. Does anyone know what a sprite is? You see sprites up there? Anyone know what a sprite is in game terminology? What is it? It's like the picture of like a character or something. Yes, that's a perfect definition. It's like the picture of a character. A sprite is a two-dimensional character. So Mario is a sprite. Unless he's Mario 3D. If he's 3D, then we call him a model. So 2D, 2D images are called sprites. 3D images are called models. And so Galaga is a 2D game, two-dimensional game, 8-bit, old-style old graphics, very retro. So we call them sprites. So we need to add some sprites. Um, another thing we need to do to make a game is we need to add a room. There has to be somewhere where the game sits. Every game has a background and a space that you play the game in. Okay. Now, in game terminology, we call that the game loop. In Game Maker, they call it your room. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a room that has a background. And what is the background for Gallagher? Space. 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 You got it. So I'm going to right click backgrounds and don't worry if I go too fast. If I go too fast, we've got the step-by-step -step instructions online at the end of the day, right? So if you miss what I clicked on, step-by-step later on. So I'm going to right click backgrounds and create a new background. <coughs> And I'm going to call it Space Background. I always give them a good name. And I've got these already created for you. You just have to load them. Right? Just load background. Oh, and there's my backgrounds folder and there's space. And if you look very carefully, you might see the little tiny stars, little dots. Okay, this is not really you know, expert art. I'm not a great artist. I'm good at painting and clicking. Right. So that's good enough. But what's the size of this space background? Let me get rid of the right hand here. What's the size of it? Does anyone see the size, width, and height? 640 by 640 pixels. Keep that in mind. Because once I have my space background, I have to make a room, which is my, my game itself, my first level, my room. And it will have that background. So let's make a room. Right click rooms, create a room. We'll call it space room. So I'll call it space room. And what do you notice about space room, guys? What's the problem here? Is anything wrong with it? Yeah, it should be 640 by 640 to match our background. What is the default size of a new room? 640 by 480. So can we change it? Sure. Let's make it 640 by 640. There we go. And now we can put our backgrounds on. I'm just going to click on backgrounds and choose our space background. We'll do that. 
Not bad. Okay, who wants to play the game now? Okay, that's good. You're going to notice one thing very, very important. When we play this game, I just click the little play button to play the game. It's very boring. <laughs> it's our room and it's our space background and that's it. So, it's our room with a view. So, what, would you, what should we do? Well, should the space be scrolling? In Galaxy? Should it be moving all the time? Yeah, so let's go back to our space room here. And where we put in our, our uh, background there, we have our space background, but can we give it a speed? Sure we can. Let's give it a vertical speed of 2. So it'll scroll vertically. That means up and down. So I'm going to press a little green check mark. That saved my changes. I'm going to press the play button again, and let's play the game again. Does that look a bit better? Yeah, it's scrolling vertically. See that? Oh, there's nothing to shoot. Yeah. Who wants to put a ship on there? There's nothing to shoot. We have to play with. Okay, so we got to add those. Yeah. Who wants to add a spaceship? Me. Okay, let's add a spaceship. So, what is a 2D graphic called again? Sprite. Sprite. Sprite, I heard it. Yeah, I just showed it out, guys. And um, I'm going to right click Sprite to make a new Sprite. And we'll make our ship first. So, we'll call it Ship Sprite. And do I have it already created? Yes. Yeah, so let's load it. load it from a file, and there it is, right down there at the bottom. And you'll notice one thing, if you look very carefully, the ship is kind of like white and red, but the background is a checkerboard, gray and white checkerboard background. It's really hard to see right there, but can, can you guys see the, the two gray and white checkerboard? Yes. You know what that means? It means it's transparent. So that when you put the ship on your space, the background is not a square, it's just the ship. Everything behind the ship is transparent. It's a PNG. Yeah, or a PNG. Okay. Can you just like cut and paste from the internet and make a ship into anything? If you choose edit sprite, you can just copy and paste sprite from Google, you know, Mario Sprite or Mario Sprite Sheet. You download a whole sheet of sprites that probably already be transparent in the background. You can just copy and paste in there. Or if it's not transparent, you can edit the sprite and on the menu choose transform erase a color and erase the background. Lots of little stuff. At the end of the day, if you have really specific questions, come on up and I'll show you all kind of stuff. It's really cool. Okay, so let me press OK there, guys. We got a sprite. But a sprite doesn't do anything. We have to tell it to move left and right along the bottom of the screen and shoot up, right? Well, what key would you press on a keyboard to move left? Left arrow key. Yeah, left arrow key. How what right would be the? Right arrow key. The right arrow key. Okay. And you can use the space bar to shoot up. That sounds great. Let's do those, guys. So, a sprite doesn't do anything until you turn it into an object. And that's real programming terminology here. Let's right-click objects down here, guys. And let's make an object called our ship object. And it's going to use our ship sprite, which means that when this object goes on our game, it's going to look like that ship. See that? So, ship object. And it's going to use our ship sprite. And we have to add events that this object can do. Let's add an event. Let's add an event that when we hold down the keyboard key, left, see that? What are we going to do? Well, look at these actions. The first one is called move fix. I'm going to start moving left at a speed of 10. Sound good? Yeah. OK. Let's add another event. What happens if I press the keyboard key, the right keyboard key? I'm going to start moving right at a speed of 10. Not bad, huh? See how I just clicked the little right one and then chose 10? Okay, when you're a programmer though, you have to think of every single combination. What happens if we're not pressing anything? Does the program need to know that? No. Yes. Yeah. 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 They just do what you tell them to do. Right. So what happens if we're not pressing any key? Well, let's add an event. This one will be a keyboard. No key. If I'm not pressing any key, you have to still put that in. No key. If I'm not pressing any key, I should move nowhere, right in the middle, speed of zero. See that? I just clicked in the middle. It should stop. Right? So as soon as you don't press any key, it'll stop. Otherwise, if you press left and you move your your finger off the key, it'll keep on going left because you didn't tell it what to do when you take your finger off the key. Cool, huh? Yeah. Okay, so that's not too bad. That's not too bad. But what happens when you get to the edge of the screen? 
Should it stop? Should it explode? Should it move around the other side? That's very 1980s retro. Should it stop? Should it stop? Should it stop? What do you think it should do? Um, I think it should um, just stop and maybe if you um, press another key while it's moving, like hold it, it should fire in like a... Like well, that's, that's pretty cool. We'll leave, we'll leave that advanced stuff to a little later. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a really cool idea. <laughs> now, Galway, we can do it whatever we want. In fact, let's change up the rules a little bit. One, one of the coolest things that you can, well, if you can imagine it, it can be done. So one of the coolest things we'll see in a lot of 80s games, if you go off one end of the screen, it'll come around the right hand side. Like yeah. right? Yeah. You guys want to do that? You don't have to follow the rules of Galaga. So that's at an event, we'll call it an other event, intersect boundary. So if we intersect the boundary of our room, we get to the edge of our room. What are we going to do? Well, look at this one over here. Wrap street. Let's wrap around horizontally. That means left and right, right? Horizontally. Let's wrap around to the other side. Cool. Everyone wants to play the game now. One person? Okay. Uh, I'm going to press OK here. What do we have to do? We made an object that uses that sprite, that picture, and says if we press left, it goes left. If we press right, it goes right at the speed of 10. We don't press anything, it stops. If it reaches the edge of the screen, it wraps around. We have to add that ship to our, our room, our background, our space room, right? So let's go down to our space room here, and it's just space. It's kind of boring. Let's go down to the, the bottom here, and let's add our ship. There we go. I just left click, and I add the ship right at the bottom there. Not right at the bottom, but close. Oh, wait a second. As a programmer, we always think about everything as an object. And objects know what they have to do. Right? We told it that object would have to do. What if we put two of the same object on there? Can we do that? Yeah, in Galaga, can you have double shifts? Yeah, we can have double shifts in Galaga. Two of the same object. And will they do the exact same thing? But they won't use any more resources. They won't use any more processing power or memory or anything like that. So people think, oh wow, I've got like a hundred zombies on my game. That must be really hard to do. No, we just make one zombie, we do it a hundred times, and we tell each one to do something slightly different. It really doesn't take much processing power. <laughs> so there, there's shortcuts in programming, right? And having two of the same object is one of those shortcuts. So let's save our changes, guys, and play the game. And look at this. Left, right, left, right. Ooh, I wrapped around. Look at that. Can I go? Okay, there's only one problem though. I can't. I can't shoot. Who wants to make this thing shoot? Me. Okay. <laughs> Me wants to make it shoot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to we're we're gonna have to have we're gonna have to have um, missiles that shoot up, right? Missiles from the good guys, we'll call good missiles. Missiles from the bad guys, we call bad missiles. So let's make a good missile. Oh, it has to be a graphic of a missile. What's that called? Sprite. A sprite. Let's, sprite. let's make a sprite. I'm going to right click sprites, so make a sprite. We'll call it good missile sprite. And we'll load it from a file, and there it is. Right down there. Good missile sprite. And now you can see, if you look very carefully, can you see the checkerboard background clearly now? Yes, there's the checkerboard background. And a sprite doesn't do anything. It's just a two-dimensional graphic until you turn it into object. an object. Good. Okay. Let's go down to objects. Let's create an object. We'll call it good missile object. And we'll choose our good missile graphic, our good missile sprite. And as soon as this missile is created by our ship, what should that missile start doing? It should start shooting up. up. Really, really fast? Yes. Okay, so as soon as it's created, as an event, as soon as it's created, which one do I click? Create. Create. As soon as it's created by our ship, we're going to start moving up really, really fast. How fast? 20? 30? Do I hear 40? 45? 47? 48. It's sold. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Start moving up really fast. See the 48. Remember, we move back and forth at a speed of 10, so 48 is going to be much faster. 100 is a little too fast because you don't see it. I've tried 100. 100 is a nice number. All right, guys, so that's our, that's our object. But you have to think of what happens. You could shoot a thousand bullets. And as soon as that bullet flies off of our screen, off of our room, 
it keeps on moving. It keeps on using that processing power and then forever. And after about five minutes, the game will crash because you've just used up all the processing power of your computer <laughs> or phone or tablet. So it's very important as a programmer to keep in mind that whenever something goes off the screen, you should destroy it. So it doesn't use any more processing power. And when you destroy stuff at home, you usually throw it in the recycle bin, right? So down here under Maine, there is a little recycle bin. Destroy the instance. So let's add an event. And this event will be a special one. The other outside room. As soon as this your missile goes outside the room, as soon as it's outside the room, guys, it's going to destroy itself. See how it says destroy instance and self? Cool. Right. So any missiles that go outside our room are actually destroyed. They self-destruct. So that we, they, our game doesn't slow down. Alright guys, I'm going to press OK. I'm going to press OK. Now we've got a missile object that automatically flies upwards. But what should fire that missile? Ship. Our ship. space bar. What, and what object ship. should fire it? Ship. The ship object. So let's go over our ship object again. And our ship object says, if we move left, uh, if we press left, we move left, we press right, we move right, we press no key, we, we stop. And if we go to the, the edge, the intersect boundary, we wrap around. Let's add a new event that says when we press space bar, we fire. But you got to be careful, because when you fire, you're not holding down a key. You're pressing it. So if you press it three times really quickly, it should fire three times really quickly, right? So that's not a keyboard event. That's a key press event. So if I press the space bar really quickly once, as soon as I press it down, it's going to we go down here, a little light bulb. That little light bulb is create an instance of another object. Let's create a good missile. And what's going to happen as soon as that good missile is created? It's going to start flying up, because that's what the good missile object knows what to do. Now, very important, if you're doing this at home, when you create a good missile object from your ship, make sure it's relative to your ship. Because if you don't check on that little relative, it creates in the upper left-hand corner and you're going to see it. <laughs> so make sure it's right relative, right in front of your ship, right? Okay, let's play the game now, guys. Oh, look at that. Can I shoot? Oh, and because there's two ship objects, do they shoot the same thing? Yeah. Just like in real Galaga, right? Are they destroying them? Uh, bugs. You can't see them being destroyed off the screen, but we need something to shoot. No, but it's I heard it. I don't understand how that came into it. It's built into the, the you built it into the shop. Right? You built it into the little bit object. Okay. Object. Yeah. Object. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So even though if we play this game one more time, guys, that was a good question. If we play the game one more time, I'm shooting lots of missiles. And we see them on the screen, but what happens when they reach the top edge? Do they keep flying? No. No, they stop the stroke. They self-destruct, so they're gone. So we can't see that happen, but we know darn well that in our um, good missile logic, as soon as they fly off the screen, if they're outside the room, they automatically self-destruct. If we left this on for five minutes and it doesn't crash, it's pretty safe to say it's all <laughs> Now what do we need? We need to shoot some bugs. space bugs. Now, um, space bugs, they look